I think I'm recording this time. <laughs> this is my fourth time recording this problem. <sighs> oh, okay, anyway, welcome back to Engineering Dynamics. I am your host, Dr. Watt, and today we are going to try to get through a few example problems explaining um, sliding contacts and how they work. So in your dynamics class, you go from particles to rigid bodies. And in particles, you learn relative motion, and then you get to rigid bodies, and you learn some more relative motion. And then all of a sudden, the section comes up, and it's like, wait a second, now you're comparing points that are no longer on the same rigid body, and things change. Today, we are going to go through some of those changes and some of those workout examples. If that interests you, stay tuned. Okay, so for our first example, we have a rolling disc on a plane surface with a counterclockwise angular velocity of 10 radians per second. Bar AB slides on a surface of the disc at A. Uh, determine the angular velocity of bar AB. So I am looking for omega AB. What is omega AB? Um, in order to find omega AB, I need to understand its rigid body motion. So why don't we take AB out of the system of rigid bodies and we just look at the one rigid body, okay? Because this and this is labeled B and this is labeled A. And I can see that points A and B are on the same rigid body. That means that the distance between them are is a constant. It's not going to change. That distance is forever that distance. That is the definition of a rigid body. Definition of a rigid body means that all the particles within that body remain fixed to each other. So it, they remain that same distance. Okay, so if I am looking for omega, um, let's say if the disk there's a few different ways you can do this. Um, sometimes people just assume um, positive values if they don't know the direction. And sometimes people will try to guess it and then look at their end uh, answer and see if the sign works. So in this case, I know that the disc is uh, rotating. It's rolling about a surface. So it's kind of doing this action. So C is moving in some linear velocity in that manner. If it's rotating that way, I can also see that this disc or this um, bar is going to slide downward. It's going to slide down the disc as the disc rotates. So in my opinion, I mean, it's kind of obvious to see that Omega is going to be going that way. So I would say that omega is going to be in the in the clockwise direction. Again, you can just keep everything positive in that at the end you can say that it's going in that direction or try to guess it. Okay? It really doesn't matter. Anyway, let's take let's try to develop an equation that will give us omega A B. We said that A is in pure rotation of B. That means that we can say that our velocity vector this is VA, is perpendicular to its position vector, okay? So we know that VA is perpendicular, excuse me, oopsies, is perpendicular to the position vector RA with respect to B. Because they're perpendicular and because A rotates about B, that has an omega, right? So if I say um, omega cross r, that's going to give me my third vector that's perpendicular to both of the vectors that I'm crossing. That's uh, going to be v. So I can say give me v a equals omega a b cross r a with respect to b. This is my first equation. But you can see that I have two unknowns right here. So omega AB is specific to rigid body AB. But the point A 
it also is in contact with the second rigid body. So why don't we come up with a different expression for VA to see if we can solve for this unknown, okay? So if I look at VA, and this time I'm going to relate it to the disc. Now, there is a point here, C, and a lot of students, I think, would be automatically wanting to compare A to C. If you were to do that, the equation would be VC equals VA relative to C plus omega cross RA relative to C. Here's the problem. If you choose C as your point, you introduce another unknown. Yes, you, well, in order to find what this is, you would have to relate VC to another point. Okay, looking at this disc, can we see another point? Because our whole, remember while I'm asking you to like find different points, we describe a body by describing two points. If you can't describe the entire motion of the disc using points A and C, you have to find a third point. Well, if you go back to the uh, directions, it says that the disc rolls on a plane surface. This tells you that there is a point here, point P, that has zero velocity. That means that this is your IC of zero velocity. So instead of comparing A to C, I could compare A to P. I could say VA is equal to VA relative to the disc plus omega of the disc cross R A with respect to the IC or letter P, whichever one you want to use, okay? Now that looks a lot better because now I only have this unknown and this unknown. If I set, and this is equation two, if I set one and two equal to each other, now I only have two unknowns because the VA goes away. I only have VA rel and omega AB as my unknowns. One vector equation gives two scalar equations, two equations, two unknowns, good to go, okay? So let's go ahead and work out what this equals. I have that VA equals VA rel. Hmm, what is it VA rel? Well, VA rel is the velocity that is experienced between the two objects, okay? So if it's kind of easier to see if I had like a bar here and this bar slid in a slot here and it rotated down. The velocity that this point would experience relative to the slot would be in this these directions, right? Depending on if it was going up or down, rotating up or down. It is constrained, the motion path is constrained to the shape of the second body. Just like, let's do another example. Say if this, just like we, we see in our problem here, say if this was connected or on top of like a box and the box translated to the left, this bar would fall straight down because it has to follow the shape of the box. Okay, now take a look at the shape of where it's falling. The shape is a circle that it's connected to, so that means that VA has to be falling tangential to that circle. So this is the velocity relative, A relative to the disc, okay? So as the disc rolls away, it slides down, but it has to slide on the surface of the, the disc, and the disc is um, a circle, and we know that velocity is always tangential to the curve. Okay, so that's how I got that angle down. Okay, now that I have the angle, I do, or the, the graphical representation, I have to come up with how to express it as a vector. So here we can see Let's go ahead and draw some dotted lines here. We see that this is an angle 45, right? And this point here is A. If I move A to C, or if I move C to A, it doesn't matter. But say I per if I move this vector here, 
great. This is 45. So if I draw, I can either draw a horizontal here and say it's 45, or I can see it here and say it's 45, whichever it is kind of for you to vision. But basically, if I wanted to take the components, it's at a 45 degree angle at both of these. Is that clear? I hope so. If not, leave a comment and I, I, maybe I can explain it better. Okay, so here we're gonna have that VREL is equal to, that's the vector, is gonna be um, some magnitude in the x direction, and that's going to be cosine 45i minus uh, some magnitude in the i direction, which is sine 45j. So my v rel is going to equal cosine 45 is 7.0 0 0.707 v rel i minus uh, 7.707 v rel j. Oh my goodness, what happened? <laughs> Sorry, g, uh, v rel in the j direction. All right, so I can plug that in here. I have 0.707 v rel in the i uh, minus 0.707 v rel in the j. Plus, okay, now I have my omega. Um, omega was given to us as negative 10k cross r. Oh, now I have to do r a with respect to c. So let's get maybe purple and we'll do a little thick. So r a with respect to the IC is a position vector that looked like this. So if I want to break it up into its components, I'm going to have the X component and the Y component. Well, this length from IC to C is one foot. And then I'm going to do one plus. It would be this vector, which is also one, and it would be cosine of 45. Okay, and then the same for the x-axis. The x-axis is just going to be one um, uh, sine 45. All right, so let's do my position vector r a with respect to i c is equal to, in the x direction, I'm going to have one cosine 45 i plus, in the i direction, I have one plus the sine of 45j, okay? And that just is me projecting that long vector, okay? So we can add that in. Let me go back to my orange color. And we have um, cosine 45 is 0. Point, ooh, I don't want it that thick anymore. Um, 0 0.707 um, i. <laughs> plus 1.707j. All right, and then um, we can clean that up a bit. We have VA equals 0.707 VREL in the I minus 707V rel in the J. Um, now I'm going to do 10 times 0 0.707, which is going to give me 7.07 j, k cross i is positive j, but you have a negative 10 out there. Then I have 10 times 1.707, which is going to give me 17.07. k cross i, or k cross j is negative i, but you have a negative 10 out here, which makes it positive. This is your full second equation. I now need you to set equation, because now we have two equations that represent va. Now we can put them together to get one large vector equation. Um, oh, before we do that, let's expand this all the way out. So um, V, I have V A equals omega A B. I don't know what omega A B is. Um, I'm assuming it's in the negative direction. So I'm gonna say negative omega A B K cross, then I'm going to say um, R A with respect to B, that is going to be 
uh, this distance here. So I have R A with respect to B. This length is two. Um, in order to find, like in order to break this up into components, I am going, I would say that we need to do some uh, geometry. Let's go ahead and clean this up for a second just so I can see what I'm working with. Okay. All right. So I need to find, in order to break up, I'm looking for vector components are A with respect to B. I have the magnitude, but I'm going to need an angle theta. To do the angle theta, I'm going to look at this triangle right here. This is a beautiful triangle. This length um, A to C is one. I have two, I know two sides are known in one angle. That means I can use the law of sines. I can say one divided by the sine of theta is equal to two divided by the sine of 45. This is going to give me a theta of like 20 point something, 0.7 degrees. Okay, so that is going to be this theta. So I can say that R a with respect to B is equal to two negative two cosine 20.7 I plus two sine 20.7 J. So that comes out to be negative two cosine 20.7. This is going to be negative 1.87 I uh, plus two times sine 20.7 degrees, 0 0.707J. And now I can um, do my cross product. So I have VA equals negative omega AB times 1.87. Negative times a negative is a positive. K cross I is positive J. Then I'm going to have negative um, omega, so I have 0 0.707 times omega AB, and that is going to be K cross J is negative I, but I have a negative out front, so it's going to be positive, and that's going to be I. And this is going to be our, our first full equation. Now I am ready to say equation one equals equation two. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, my first equation says 1.87 omega a b j plus 0 0.707 omega a b i is equal to, that's an i, <laughs> 0 0.707 VREL I minus 7. Or 0.707 VREL J hat minus 7.07 J hat plus 17.07 I hat. Now what I want to do is I want to collect one vector equations, give two scalar equations. So I'm going to collect all my I terms. this one and I'm going to write that out and I have 0 0.707 omega AB equals 0 0.707 VREL uh, plus 17.07. So I am going to further isolate my omega AB um, and these are my I's. So my omega A, B is equivalent to V rel plus 17.07 divided by 0 0.707. All right, so I have 17.07 divided by that is going to be about 24. So let me rewrite this. Omega A, B equals V rel plus 24.14. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our J components. Our J components are 1.87 omega AB. Omega AB I just um, got an expression for, which is VREL 
plus 24.14 equals, so that was this term, equals, and now we have two more, negative 0.707 VREL minus 7.07. .07. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this out. We have um, 1.87 VREL, and then we have 1.87 times 24.14, um, which is gonna give me 44.9, is equal to negative 0 0.707 VREL minus 7.07. .07. Okay, I want to go ahead and group my like terms. So I am going to add this VREL over. Um, and that's gonna be 1.87 plus 0 0.707. This is gonna give me 2.577 VREL equals, now I'm gonna take uh, my 44.9 over, that's negative seven. Uh, 0 0.07 minus 44.9, and this is going to give me negative 51.97. I'm going to divide that by 2.577, and this gives me a VREL of negative 20.2 feet per second. Now I want to plug that in to my VREL uh, equation back into uh, my first component. So this is going to be omega AB equals negative 20.2 plus 24.14. My omega AB is equal to um, 3.9-ish. And that is gonna be radians per second. Do I want to redo that so I don't confuse you? I don't think I'm going to do this over. I really don't. I think I'm just going to move on. All right, so our next example, this is going to be, a lot of students look at this and they're like, uh-uh, nope, I'm done. <laughs> but not anymore. You're not going to be scared of this anymore. Let's take a look. In the system shown, bar A, B, has an angular velocity of four radians per second in the clockwise direction. So we have in the clockwise direction, we have omega equals four, and we also have in, it, is, it has an angular acceleration of 10, but in the counterclockwise, that means that the bar is slowing down at a rate of 10 radians per second squared. It wants us to find what the acceleration of the pin is relative to the rigid body or relative to point C. Okay, so here again, we have one point that's in common. So first question, is points A and B on the same rigid body? Yes. That means that the distance between them, they're gonna stay constant. Is the, di is the uh, point B on the plate? Is it actually connected to the plate? No, it slides on the plate. So it, its distance between C and B, that distance, that R, is going to be variable. That means that you're gonna use sliding contact. Again, B is, they're asking us for um, the acceleration, the relative acceleration at B. We can develop lots of equations here. Um, why don't we first just show what the equation would be with that variable in it? and then find out what our unknowns are. And then we can kind of develop a methodology or an approach to solve for all the unknowns. So I can relate the acceleration at B is equal to um, A B rel plus two omega B, sorry, two omega BC, which is gonna be of the plate. So I don't know if you want to call, well, we'll just say BC. BC cross RB with respect to C plus alpha cross RB with respect to C minus two BC squared RB with respect to C. All right, lots of unknowns, lots of unknowns. I have, this is what I'm looking for, unknown, unknown, unknown. Oh my, I made a mistake. That's not an 
our uh, our position vector. Now that's v rel. That's v b rel. Okay, and v b rel is also an unknown and an unknown. So in order to get information about acceleration, we really need to start with um, velocity first. And that's because I don't know if they gave me the angular velocity of the plate, then I could go straight to acceleration. But I don't know any of the velocity um, parameters of the plate, so I will have to start with that. So why don't we come up with the velocity of B is going to equal now First, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing I did for acceleration. I'm going to compare points B and A. So this would be V rel. And remember that B is the plate is in pure rotation about a, a C. That's why we don't have a VC in this equation because VC equals zero. So this will be plus um, omega uh, BC cross RB with respect to C. All right, I have a lot of unknowns here. I don't know this and I don't know this and I don't know this, but I can come up with a second expression for point B and I can do that by comparing B and A. B and A are constant lengths from each other. It's not gonna change. That means that I'm not gonna have a V rel term. So I can also express V B in terms of A, which it would be in pure rotation. And I am given this omega. So I can say that VB is equal to negative 4K cross RB uh, with respect to A. That's going to be 115 millimeters in the I plus 60 millimeters in the J direction. This cross product is going to give me 460 J, K cross I is positive J, but the four is negative. Then I'm going to have um, four times 60 is 240. K cross J is negative I, but you have a negative four out there. That becomes positive. This is um, going to be one relation, so we can, we can look at this. And now we can go, let's go back to this relation and let's work this out a little bit. Um, let's say that VB is equal to my relative velocity here. Um, it is the velocity of B is constrained to this slot. So it will always move in just the horizontal. There, if it had a vertical slot, it would only be the J component, but this is a horizontal slot. So it's going to be constrained to my I direction. That means that it's gonna be some magnitude, but it is constrained to the I direction. So I can make that a component. Plus omega BC. I do not know what omega BC is. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as omega BC. I do know that it's in the K direction. So now I'm going to cross that with RB with respect to C. RB uh, with respect to C is this position vector. And that is going to be 35I plus 60J. VB is equal to V rel I plus 35 omega BCJ minus 60 omega b c i. Okay, this is our second equation. We are now able to set one equal to two um, because again, this is another expression for VB. So we're just setting our VB equations equal to each other. If we do that, we have V um, rel plus 35 omega bcj minus 60 omega bci is equal to um, four, uh, negative 460j plus 240i. So now I'm going to, and this is in the uh, i direction, so now I'm going to take my one vector equation and get two scalars. So I'm going to look at my, I'm going to look at my J's first because I only have one unknown. That's 35 omega BC is equal to negative 460. So right now I'm just uh, grouping my like terms. 
So I'm going to get that omega BC is equal to uh, 460 divided by 35, which is going to give me 13.14 in the clockwise direction. Okay, um, so that's going to be in the clockwise direction. Now I'm going to take a look at my I components and I'm going to say V rel is minus 60 uh, is in the negative direction, so it's negative 13.14 equal to 240. So I'm going to do 240 minus 60 times 13.14, uh, and I am going to get that V rel is equal to negative 548.4. Okay, so my V rel, I assumed, where's my V rel? Was in the positive direction, and I also assumed that my omega BC was in the positive direction. This is telling me that this plate, so if I were to draw um, this plate here, it is actually rotating. It, it, <laughs> it is um, going to be rotating in the clockwise uh, di direction, and the velocity that are between the two is going in this direction. So that means that they're pulling against each other. So they're pulling against each other. Interesting. Okay, so we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and um, look at our accelerations. So we are going to use, we have one expression um, for AB, but we need a second expression. So let's work out our um, expression for AB with respect to A. This is the same points on one rigid body. So this is going to be A, um, what is it, A? A, B. So A, B is equal to A, A. A, A is um, an external pin. A is an external pin, so it has um, zero translational acceleration. So we are just going to have um, tangential acceleration minus centripetal or normal acceleration. So this is going to equal, this is given to us, this alpha is going counterclockwise at 10. So this is going to be 10K cross RB with respect to A, RB with respect to A. Um, RB with respect to A, that's the 115I and 60J. So 115I um, plus 60J minus omega AB is going to be my negative four. So this is um, negative four squared, 115i plus 60j. So my ab is going to equal um, 1150j minus 600i. Then I'm going to have a minus 4 squared times 115 is going to give me 1840 in the I. And then 4 squared times 60 is going to give me um, minus 960 in the J. So this is our third equation. Um, actually, why don't we go ahead and clean that up a little bit. Um, Let's clean that up a little bit. Um, let's put like terms together. So I have that AB is equal to negative 600 minus 1840 is going to give me minus 2440 in the I. 1150 minus 960 is going to give me plus 190 in the J. That's going to be my third equation that I'm using. My fourth equation is going to be the one, um, how we relate B to 
the plate. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to move it down here. Wish it was in a different color. That's all right, we'll change to red. So now I have A, B is equal. This is my second expression for A, B. It's my second expression for A, B. Um, a, B, rel is what I'm looking for, but again, I know it's con confined to the horizontal, right? Because A is still going to, it can't accelerate if it is constrained to a horizontal path. So we have uh, plus two omega BC. What was omega BC? Omega BC was negative 13.14. So this is negative 13.14 in the K cross V rel, and we said V rel was negative um, 548.4 in the I direction. So that's all kind of one term here, plus alpha uh, BC, which I don't know, cross, but I know it's in the K direction, cross RB with respect to C. RB with respect to C is 35 and 60. So we have 35 in the I plus 60 in the J. That's my tangential acceleration. And now I have my normal which was my omega BC. My omega BC was negative 13.14 squared. And then RB with respect to C, which is 35I plus 60J. All right, let's work this out. We have AB equals AB rel in the I plus, all right, negative 13.14 times 2 times negative 548.4 is going to give me a positive 14411.95k cross i is positive j. Now I need to go uh, to my tangential acceleration term. That's going to be three, 35 alpha B C J my, uh, minus 60 alpha B C K cross J is negative I. Now I have 13.14 squared times 35, which is going to be negative 6043 in the I direction, and then I'm going to do the same thing multiplied by 60J, which is going to give negative 1035.9.6 in the J. Okay, this is my fourth equation. Now I am ready to set 3 equal to 4, and to avoid writing this all out again, I'm just going to substitute 3 right here. So this is going to be negative, uh, I can write it in green, if, oops, if that helps. So I'm going to write down negative 2440i and plus 190j. Okay, now, so I don't have to rewrite all this again. <laughs> I know, I'm so lazy. All right, so now I'm going to collect all my I terms. So all my I terms on one side of the equation I have negative 2440 equals. Then I have my A B rel term and my next I is going to be negative 60 alpha B C minus 6043. And I'm going to also collect my J terms. On the first side of the equation, I have 190 equals. Then I have 14411.94 plus 35 alpha BC minus 10359.6. Okay, so it looks like my J equation I can solve directly for my alpha BC. So why don't we go ahead and do that? We have 190 minus 14411.95 plus the 1030, the 10th, 
um, 10,359 term. And then I'm going to divide that by 35. And I'm going to get an alpha BC of 110 in the clockwise direction. All right, so now I can take that answer and I can go back and plug it in here. So, and that is going to give me a B, A, B, rel of 3000 ish in the I, in the negative I direction. All right. So, um, our question was asking us for the relative. Um, and we found that this thing is actually moving, um, in a clockwise direction and it is um, having a velocity in the negative and it's also accelerating in the negative. So this answer means that our point B accelerates relative to the plate 3,000 feet per second squared in the horizontal and it's going in the negative direction. Okay, so that was example two. Okay, there is one more example that I want to go through in this video, and um, it's it's interesting. It is, let me see if I can pull up a picture. Okay, here is a picture of the problem that I want to talk about. Um, and in this problem, it states that the hydraulic actuator BC, so they're talking about this, let me highlight this. So they're talking about this piece here. This is a hydraulic actuator. It means that B and C they, uh, C can go in and out. Um, it's kind of like if you open up your trunk of your car, that um, actuator like on the side, it's probably going to be gas actuator. But anyway, when you lift it up, you see that the um, piston kind of comes out and when you close it, it goes back in. Anyway, that's what this is. So it's telling you that C and B are not constant lengths relative to each other. That's a huge hint. Um, it also says that it is extending, increasing its length at a constant rate of 2.0.2 meters per second. Um, and at the instant shown, it wants to know what the angular velocity um, of the crane's boom is. So it wants to know what is the rate of this? What is omega uh, BC or BD, wh whichever one you want. And since the actuator is extending, that means the boom is going to be rotating in a counterclockwise direction. So this guy is extending. The biggest thing here, let me read the problem again. The hydraulic actuator BC of the crane is extending. It's increasing in length at a constant rate of 0.2 meters per second. That is your biggest clue in this whole problem. This point two, that is your VC relative to B term, okay? And it wants to know omega BC. Okay, so what is the equation? So first, how many rigid bodies do we have? We actually have um, only two here. We have BC and we have CB. Points C, A, are they on the same rigid body? These are actually connected on the same rigid body. And if you were to draw like a little free body diagram of this, it would look like that. This would be C and A. So C is in pure rotation about A. So my velocity equation for C is going to be my pure rotation. It will be omega A, C, K, which is what... Um, Oh, I wrote that wrong. Oh my goodness. This right here is omega AC. Okay, anyway, I bet you caught that. Okay, so omega AC, K, and we're going to cross that with RC with respect to A. So this is VC equals omega AC, K cross RC with respect to A. That's going to be this one here that is uh, in the I direction is 1.8 plus 1.2. So that's gonna be three I uh, plus 1.4 J. So my VC 
is equal to 3 omega ACJ minus 1.4 omega ACI. This is my first relation for the velocity at C, and you see I have two unknowns. Um, I need to I need to express C, VC in a, uh, with a different point. And C is also connected to my body, my, my actuator. And this is kind of how it's drawn. So this says that it, it, it can expand um, in and out like radially, but it can also uh, rotate. If you look at C, relative to B. B is not moving, but you, the length R is going to vary. That means it's a sliding contact, so VC is equal to VC relative to B um, plus omega cross, and this is going to be omega BC, cross R B with respect to C. Okay? All right, so now I have to say, well, what is this pesky term? Let's work on VC. What is VC? We, we are given a magnitude of VC as 0.2. We're given the magnitude. So we have two choices here. We can, because we are given, we're given some dimensions here. We're given um, 1.2 and we are given 2.5. So if we have a magnitude of velocity, we need a vector. We can develop a unit vector by taking the components, the position components, which is 1.2i plus 2.4j. Now a unit vector is a magnitude of 1. So to get this into a magnitude of 1, I will have to divide by its magnitude. So that will be 1.2 squared plus 2.4 squared. Um, and this will give just the direction, okay, but a magnitude of 1. Another way to do it, I like this way, I think I'm most favorable this way. Another way to do it is to break up the velocity um, into components, but to do that you would have to find alpha. To find alpha, I would do tangent of opposite, um, which is, so it would be opposite over adjacent, so it would be 2.4 divided by 1.2, and I would get an alpha of, it would be 63, so then I could do 0.2 cosine 63i plus 0.2 sine 63j is going to be my VC rel. Whichever one you want to do is fine. Um, so let's go ahead and plug in what we have here. We have VC is equal to 0.2. Um, I'm going to do 1.2 squared plus 2.4 squared, and then take the square root of that. This here is going to be 2.68. Okay, let's take this 2.68 and um, factor it in through here. So what would VC be? If I did 0.2 divided by 2.68 times 1.2, I'm going to get 0.089 in the i direction. Then I'm going to do um, 0.2 divided by 2.68 and I'm going to multiply that by 2.4 and I'm going to get 0.18 in the j direction or I could only, I can match sig figs here. I can do um, 1 seven, nine in the J. So I want to put that here. I'm going to do VC is equal to 0.089I plus 0.179J 
plus omega BC. I don't know omega BC, but I know it's going in the counterclockwise direction just because of what we were told. If a, uh, BC is extending, then obviously it's going to be rotating in that direction. So I'm going to say omega BCK cross R um, B with respect to C. That is going to be 1.2i plus 2.4j. So VC is equal to 0.089i plus 0.179j plus uh, 1.2 omega BCj minus 2.4 omega BCi. This is our second expression for our VC. That means that we are now able to set one equal to two. All right, so um, I'm not gonna write that, but you see that we, we take this equation here and we set it equal. So let's go ahead and collect our all of our I terms. We have an I term, um, I and I. So we have negative 1.4 omega AC equals 0 0.089 minus 2.4 omega BC. So these are our I components. Let's do the same thing for our J components. We have 3 omega AC is equal to 0 0.179 plus 1.2 omega BC. I'm gonna go ahead and divide out by three here. So, so I have um, one, uh, 0.179 divided by three. That's gonna give me 0 0.0597 plus 1.2 divided by three is going to give me 0.4 omega BC. I am going to take this and I'm going to plug it in to my AC equation. So I'm gonna divide by three, that's gonna give me 0 0.0597 um, plus 0 0.4 omega BC. I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in here. So I'm going to get negative 1.4 times 0 0.0597 plus 0 0.4 omega BC equals 0 0.089 minus 2.4 omega BC. All right, now I am going to um, factor in the sky. So I'm going to do negative 1.4 times 0 0.0597. Uh, and I'm going to get negative 0 0.0835-ish um, minus 1.4 times 0.4 and I'm going to get 0 0.56 omega BC is equal to 0 0.089 minus 2.4 omega BC, negative 0 0.0835 minus 0 0.089, because I'm just putting the same terms on each side, is negative 0.1725 is equal to negative 2.5 plus 0.56 is negative 1.84 omega BC, negative 0.1725 divided by 1.84 is going to equal 0 0.09, I would say four. Whoa, <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. Hold on. Okay, so this is going to give me an omega BC equaling 0 0.094 radians per second. And the question was asking for, what was the question asking for? Uh, omega of the, uh, so AC. It was asking for AC. So I need to then plug this back in here. 
So I'm going to take this and put 0 0.094. So I'm going to say omega AC is equal to 0 0.0597 plus 0.4 times 0 0.094. So I'm going to do times plus and this is going to give me omega AC equaling 0 0.0972 radians per second. This is your answer. You are going to say that the boom is rotating counterclockwise at a rate of 0 0.0972 radians per second. I hope those three examples helped you. It gave you a variety of situations that you might see and that you feel more comfortable solving these complex problems. See you in my next video.